how much of the seafloor has been explored. Less than 2% has been seen by science. You know, every time we go to the deep sea, we find new species of, of organisms, single-celled, microscopic forms of life. These organisms are, are not germs to be feared, but actually are making the world tick. From our own microbiome to even in the deep sea. I, I really do feel that single-celled, microscopic forms of life actually are, are the key to understanding life on our planet and, and possibly elsewhere. As far as I'm concerned, microorganisms run the planet, and they've been running the planet for billions of years. In order to really understand how the geochemistry and life works on Earth, we really need to start with the microorganisms. Just looking under the microscope, you know, I like to think of it as looking at a starry night sky, but it's in miniature, and then just thinking about what all these organisms are doing, how they're interacting. So this is the Yeti crab, and they're a totally new family, unknown to science, and they were discovered, you know, 10 years ago. There's little hairs that are made by the crab, and then all everything that sort of jiggles in the seawater is bacteria. So they wave their arms over here and provide their microbes with oxygen, and then they wave their arms over here and provide them with sulfide. Then the microbes can use those two elements to produce carbon, and then the crab actually rasps these off of its body and they eat it. And so they carry their farm with them wherever they go. The organisms we are very interested in studying are, are ones that are using methane as, a, as an energy source. They're changing the chemical environment, making hydrogen sulfide that other animals are thriving on, um, actually creating carbonates, so paving the seafloor. The evolution of, of how organisms partner together and how ecosystems are structured, I think, is um, fundamental for our understanding how life has changed and evolved over the course of, of history. magical about being down there and looking out the viewport and realizing this is a, a vista that you alone or you and the pilot and the other scientists are, are seeing uniquely for the first time. 
Uh, one of the things we've been doing more recently is trying to understand how microorganisms basically metabolically collaborate to, to do this process of oxidizing methane with sulfate. It's very hard to break the methane molecule, but these particular organisms have figured out a way to eke out a little bit of energy by using sulfate in, in seawater instead. And we believe that it's being converted directly into electrons, and those electrons are being passed outside of the cell. And so this has been like a big mystery for many, many years in the field. We, we sort of would see these organisms together. We knew their collective metabolism, but we didn't understand the details. It's still not absolutely certain, so we're, it's an active research area, but it's a really exciting way of, of thinking about how organisms can take advantage of, of the full energetic landscape that's out there. It's one of the largest habitats, if you want to call it, or environments on our planet. There's a very personal connection that you have with it. You said like it's this empty, barren plain, but when we see that, we both see different parts of it, but we both see an amazing diversity. A square meter of that, right. there are more species in that than a square meter of rainforest wow. or coral reef. Yeah. They're tiny and they live in the mud and you can't see them and most of them are unknown right, and haven't been described, but they're there. It's one of the most diverse places on Earth. I, I really love looking at the samples when they come up from the seafloor, like, kind of like every Alvin dive is Christmas morning, you know? Yeah. So this was um, a few of the pieces off the claw of one of the Yeti crabs that we've seen the size you're collecting. So right now it's hard to tell much on board the ship besides shape when you're dealing with microorganisms. But we can use that as sort of an initial guess on how many different types might be present. We bring deep sea sediment back to the lab and try to recreate conditions like these deep sea methane environments. Eventually, one day, we'll be able to really understand how microbial ecosystems tick. I don't think this is a, even a 10-year achievable goal. I think if we project out all of the things that we don't understand, it, it is a pretty Herculean task. On the other hand, the technologies are getting better and better to allow us to, to dive into these very complex ecosystems. We're making progress at a rate that is outpacing the textbooks. We can't write textbooks fast enough to, to cover all of the really fundamental discoveries that are happening in, in the field of, of microbial ecology right now. Trying to understand how microbial communities work and how individual organisms are interacting with each other to undergo these amazing metabolic feats, I think are really open-ended questions and have big implications. Um, not only for understanding how the world works, but also being able to interpret our own health and well-being. And it certainly has implications for our potential searching for uh, evidence of life or uh, habitable worlds outside of, of Earth. And, and that's a really big question. It's not a new question. I think, you know, even when I was a, a child, I think that's it's always been out there, like, are we alone, are we not? And But it's only been recently that people are actually thinking about what would we even look for? What is considered habitable? What do we know about life on our own planet that, that would help constrain the kinds of conditions that we would have to seek elsewhere? <laughs>